Hello guys, this is Brian Mounts. I run TurfMechanic.com and today I'm going to be talking to you about aeration. As I'm recording this video, it is winter. People don't usually do things to their lawns in the winter. However, those of us that keep gardens and keep lawns know that the winter is the perfect time to start planning for the coming season. Inside the house just yesterday, my wife was scratch padding out for her vision for our garden next year. She was sorting her seeds. I've been doing inventories of the fertilizers and miscellaneous products that I use in the lawn over the past couple weeks. In fact, I published a video not that long ago about the expiration or the shelf life of various lawn fertilizers and lawn products. If you missed that, I'll put a link to it down in the description below. Today, however, I wanted to start thinking about aerating. I did not aerate my lawn in the fall, but I did manually aerate a portion of my lawn this past spring, back in the spring, about nine months ago. Nine months ago, I used this tool and I went through the entire other side of my house over there with this tool, this was a very inexpensive tool that I bought on Amazon. Alternatively, you can rent power machines from probably local tool dealers, rental centers in your neighborhood. Uh, you could probably spend one to $300 on rentals or having companies come over to do a mechanical aeration of your lawn. I chose to spend, I don't know, somewhere between 30 and 50 bucks or so on a tool and just do it myself. It's good exercise. It does take a good long time, however. That's why products like this are so tempting. These are liquid aeration products. These are only two. These are just the two that I have here in my garage right now. There are many others out there. I've researched and looked at lots of them. These are the only two I have on hand. Uh, this is the uh, Next Aerate product. This is uh, ChemWise uh, Simple Plant Foods Simple Aeration Product. These are so tempting to use to aerate your lawn because they don't require the use of enormous amounts of manual labor using a core aeration tool. They don't require an enormous amount of time or money renting a large piece of machinery or purchasing it. I guess if you're made of money, you could go buy these things. They're thousands of dollars. But you can see the benefit of using these because most of us, especially my viewers here on the channel, most of us have liquid fertilizer spreaders, which these go into and you just spray it on your lawn. Probably takes about 10 minutes, depending on the size of your lawn. So the purpose of this video is really to talk about the differences. What's the difference? Now, over on my website, I got a number of readers. Not everyone that follows Turf Mechanic is on YouTube. A number of my readers over on the website, they read my response to this question a lot. And for the sake of video, I wanna just show you. These products have labels that basically imply that they're going to aerate your lawn just like you would use a core aerator to aerate your lawn. The entire purpose of aerating your lawn is to provide pathways in the form of little, you know, quarter to half inch tubes uh, that go into the dirt, into your lawn soil. Those pathways allow air to go in, air to flow out, and it allows for water to go in. It allows for nutrients. So if you're fertilizing the lawn, uh, you can apply fertilizer and it will go into the holes or the cores and make it down to the root zone much more efficiently than if you just top dress or just apply to the foliar leaves or to the ground surface. The thing is that most of these products are not going to provide pathways for air to go down and back up, but they are going to allow water. My chickens just went crazy back there. They are gonna allow water to go deeper into the ground a little bit easier. And that's because the vast majority of liquid aeration products use really direct surfactants in them, which are wetting agents, or they kind of create that wetting agent effect. Now, here in the lawn care community, we're a tight-knit community. Over on the Grass Factor channel, just a few months ago, a video was posted about these products being scams. Now, I don't believe that they are scams, but I do believe 
that they imply a little bit more than they actually do. These do work really well as surfactants and they do add uh, carbon components into the lawn and they do stimulate microbial life and activity. Now, the surfactant portion of these products is what allows water to hit the ground and get absorbed in it. Now, everyone knows of a time in your life, maybe it's every single time you water the lawn, but when you hit water on the lawn, if it just pools there on the surface and kind of like trickles down the hill, that is a surface tension problem. So the water hits the lawn, if it gets absorbed straight in like a sponge, then that is, that's fantastic. That's what we want. But many situations that water hits the surface of our soil and it doesn't absorb very quickly or easily. You see this a lot in gardening. Again, we, we manage a nice garden here. If you were to buy a bag of coconut core, or even peat moss for that matter, any sort of potting material, when it's dry, if you put water into it, it kind of beads and rolls off the side and just goes down the side of your pot and just leaks out the bottom. And that's because of a surface tension problem. Once the material is dry, it repels water. It's hard for the water to get absorbed into it. Now in a lawn setting, the same thing happens. The only difference is there's no side of the pot for the water to go to and then run down and leak out the bottom. It's all over the place. So to combat that, is we use surfactants and that allows the water to hit the surface and absorb in. It's a wetting agent and that's what these things do. Once the water goes into the soil, it will go deeper than it probably will without the wetting agent. With a core aerator, whether it's one of these manual ones or one of the really expensive heavy mechanical ones, you are puncturing holes that are going to go three, four, five inches into the ground. So you're going to be pooling water in these holes in the ground. So that is in effect the wetting agent. You're creating little channels for the water go, to go down and then slowly seep into the ground. These products are going to use their surfactant-like capabilities or the direct surfactants that are in them to absorb water down lower into the lower reaches of the ground. But this product right here is going to allow nutrients to go down into the ground and it's going to allow for that air exchange. That's not going to happen with these. What they do offer, however, is the ability to stimulate microbial life in the ground because of the, let's see, this, this product right here contains 5% potassium. Now this is com coming from potassium hydroxide, which is a very alkaline product. This product uses a different potassium and it's a different concentration. This is an 8% uh, potassium. I'm forgetting here off the top of my head. It's derived from potassium acetate. This contains iron, which is going to help with green, but it also contains humic acid. This is a 6% humic acid. This is an 8% humic acid. Both of these products are going to stimulate biological activity in the ground. Now that biological activity is extremely beneficial for your soil structure and the health of your soil and the ability of your grass to thrive in the soil and you're not getting that when you use any form of core aeration. When the soil is healthy, when the soil is thriving with biological activity, then you end up getting other kinds of bugs and worms and other miscellaneous living creatures in your lawn, things that you want there that are going to open pathways in the garden. We want worms in the garden because the worms create little channels for air, to, air and water to flow through. And of course, they nourish the soil with their castings that they leave behind. That is what we want in the lawn. The lawn is basically a large garden. Our crop in the lawn is grass. So these products, although they're not going to create air exchange and they're not going to remove material out of the ground, which would be like removing mass from the area. I don't want to remove mass. I want the ground to be here. I just want the soil in the ground to be healthy. And that's what these products do. Now, what's the difference between core aerating and liquid aerating? Both forms, whether you're using mechanical, manual, or, or liquid, all three forms, when you use these things, you are going to be 
allowing more moisture, more water to penetrate deeper into the lawn. Excellent idea. That is completely in line with many videos that I have produced on this channel where I have talked about watering your lawn deep and infrequently. We want that. The core aeration, whether it be manual or mechanical, is going to allow for air exchange and it's going to bring some of the material to the sur surface. It's the cores that it brings to the surface. Now some people bag those up, rake them up and get rid of them, but it's good material so I just think why would you ever want to get rid of it unless you truly want the flattest lawn possible, which I don't particularly care about. As you see I've got a large hill here. I don't care about flatness per se, but this is going to, these core aerators are going to provide that air exchange. The liquid aerators are going to provide the stimulus for microbial life. That's going to improve the soil structure of the ground. Now, I think you see where I'm getting at here. I think it's not an either or. I really do think that this is important. I mean, I spent, I'm going to guess about $40 on this thing. Now I'm going to use this in various places, especially here in the hill. Um, I'm going to manually poke some holes on this hill uh, so that I can get a better uh, soil structure started here on this hillside for a better lawn this coming year. But I'm also going to use products like this because I want the soil because I want the actual biological activity to really get going on this hillside right here. That's the only way that I'm really going to take this hillside to the next level and turn it into the thriving yard that I want it to be. Now, in previous videos, I've talked about no cost, no product lawn repair. And I've talked about this hill and how mowing and watering is basically all you need but that takes a lot of time. Now, if I want to stimulate biological life in the, in the soil of this hillside, then these products are gonna accelerate that process. It, they are completely not necessary. I would encourage you to watch my no-cost lawn repair video if you have missed it. I will link to it, I don't know, somewhere up over my left shoulder and probably down in the description below. These things are not necessary, absolutely not necessary. Over time, your soil structure will continue to improve if you're tending to the, your uh, lawn properly and with purpose. Core aerating is going to help. These will speed the process up, but they are completely different even though this is called an aerator and they call this aeration and they call this aeration. They're all different. As I said in the beginning of this video, it's winter. We're not doing any of this stuff now. Nothing's growing. It's too cold. Right now, my fingers are numb. I really should be dressed in like a coat right now, but I don't want to be bundled up for this, for this video. Nothing's growing. So there's no microbial life. It's all dormant right now. Everything is asleep. They're hibernating. So these products don't get put down until the soil temperatures start coming up. Aeration? that can help the soil temperatures come up a little bit. So these kinds of products are going to be used in my lawn on the warm days at the end of winter. For me, it's probably gonna be late February and throughout March. I used this tool for the entire month of March last year. And then at the end of March, maybe early April, depending on temperatures, that's when the liquids come out. Now, in the middle of the winter, we're not using this stuff, but this is when you buy it. This is when you plan. This is when you do your garden bed map. You figure out what you want to accomplish in the coming season and you prepare for that because it's really easy to have good results when you have a good plan. So whether you're watching this in the middle of the summer of 2022 or you're watching this tomorrow at the end of 2020, I hope that you consider making a plan for the future look to the next three, four, five, six months out and make your plan. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hit that like and subscribe button for more videos coming out down the road. I will continue to be producing helpful videos for the foreseeable future. I want you to trust the information that I provide you and I want you to understand that there are ways to do everything in your lawn without spending that much money. Certainly products can make it a little bit faster, but they're not necessary. I hope that comes off clear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.